definitely stuck in that. Uh, that's something I would probably need to test. Usually, like, mo trying to, like, I movement based you abilities on your allies and Chrono, right? like, stops you. Because you used to be able to cookie, I think, out, but you can't do that any longer. Yeah, I, I, my, I, I believe that usually your movement is restricted while you're in there, so I'd be really surprised if you could throw somebody out. God, imagine if you could, though. That'd be definitely <laughs> worth it whenever there was a face exploit. Yeah, oh, that's right. It's decent. The spin is out, and they put a decent amount of damage here over on the Puck Champ heroes here in this top lane. Does leave Palantimos a little bit vulnerable now. Is going to take some full damage here from those uh, flame spirits. It's okay. It's worth it, though. Um, they, they force out Sandstorm. It doesn't get, uh, get gets used defensively, not offensively, so it's going to make Palantimos' last hits easier. And just starting that off right away is going to put their abilities on cooldown um, and means that they're going to be up a little fat grass their opponent. And this is what uh, what ESJ was saying. He's very concerned about the fact that Ghostick is just going to be allowed to basically free farm this entire lane. Yeah, he's going to have a good time for sure. Line five is de definitely the le lesser common way to play. Almost everybody's been playing line four instead, so you can be aggressive. Mm -hmm. So um, playing as the five means that your disables are going to be harder to execute because it's less likely that you're going to have Blink Dagger or Aether Lens at a good timing. But, you yeah. know, um, yeah, your raw HP is not amazing. You know, attacking Centaur is not really, really going to do much, but on the bright side, Void should be fine in this lane. So, just get some levels and maybe do some rotations and maybe have a good game. So what lane would you say is, is the most uh, critical? I almost tried to say crucial and critical at the same time. Both those things, but anyways, uh, is the one that, you know, really has to pop off for the side of Puck Champ here while this Void takes his time and starts to really, you know, get the items necessary to carry this game. The lane that'll be most interesting is probably the, the top lane here. Um, could be kills on both sides. <laughs> this actually getting a little pressure goes to TP to his tower instantly. 100 gold lost. Uh, but yeah, it could go both ways. Sinking had an amazing performance last time he played and made the hero look really is valuable. Maybe it won't be quite the same this game, but we'll see. Um, and then they could definitely get kills on their opponents as well. Um, Jug plus Grimstroke is a scary lane, so... I don't really see anybody dying in the mid lane unless there's some major mistakes. So, mm -hmm. that Fen will get pressured, but he's got great armor. We farming, eating them creeps, you know how it goes. I feel like Melix is going to have a more difficult time uh, this time around just because, yes, he can get the jump on people, um, but if that ink swell is available, he's got to skedaddle very, very fast and get away. Otherwise, he's going to end up falling uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, Yule Scepter's Glimmer Capes will yeah. be really effective this game. But a harass here on sync. He was so ready for that one. Really nicely done. Felt that that was going to be the moment they go aggressive. He ends up taking the Oh, there it is. There's a That's a classic lane. But let's throw them into the big scary horse man. You see the hoof stomp and the damage fall. So, yeah, not too surprising that the kill happens there. You think when Centaur gets boots, does he only wear them on his two back hooves? Or do you think he wears them on all of his hooves? He puts it on his uh, his horse back, and it just sits there. On his sure. back? That's yeah, silly, Purge. That makes I zero mean, sense. A shoe doesn't exactly fit on a horse's foot. Uh, they do when they're special horseshoes. You're saying that every boot magically transforms yeah. for the wear? Uh, have you noticed that this game is magic, and there's a fairy in it? Hello, Purge? Look, they're just, I'm, I'm just saying I could have really used a shoe shop in the, uh, the Dota anime to really explain some of these unanswered questions, that's all. All right, that's a fair point. That's definitely fair. Like what, what if it was like a shoe shop and all they had in there was brown brown boots? My blade and they were like the completely blade. different types, like some for like horses, uh, you know, some, that would that would basically solve our problem. God, we need that to be canon. Can we get that in season yeah, two? We need that for book two. Probably. That's That's scary, actually, that Astro went in for the Icarus dive there because that's not going to be available for... Uh, a he, little he bit now. To, he had hit the healing ward. Mm. Why? Alan Timos will be able to land the ink swell, but doesn't want to get too crazy here. Yeah, he was a little scared about a burrow strike response. Fire spirits could have done a lot of damage, but not bad. They're they're handling this really well on the puck team side. They've been clearly experienced against against this dual lane. You have to like just read your opponent's minds a little bit, and they've been doing that. And these are some of those heroes that they feel very, very comfortable on on the side of Puck Champ, so I'm sure that helps out quite a bit. Top lane, spin coming out again this time. This little phoenix is silenced up with the Phantom's Embrace. 
and uh, well done. they'll be able to go and collect themselves a kill. Yep, came forward a little bit too much, uh, gets the silence off, and by the time his silence gets her, the uh, Inks well finishes him off. So, nice, nice kill there. Uh, two kills now for Unique, but everything's going okay. Lots of assets on Boy, lots of assists on Centaur as well, but Jug's a little bit lower, a little bit, a little bit lower here. Oh, and Void is going for the Battle Fury. His, uh, his evolution is complete, guys. Ooh. Void good, I guess. Ooh. Oh, the call is no. The final hit comes out. Down goes Lion. And uh, now the Void has to play a little bit more carefully in this lane when he doesn't have that save. He'll be fine. He's got Ring of Health and uh, Time Walk, so as long as he gets a little bit more healed, he'll be okay. Or Rune doesn't get it. On the other side, uh, Phoenix picking up the illusion. Whoops! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And the spotting out these stacks that have been created as well for the Jug. Probably would like to do something with that, but they'll use the ink swarm, perhaps uh, get the sun up. No, melees, throw striking away. And then be the Icarus dive. These illusions are helping out quite a bit here. Can Slayer get the denial off? No. So amazing. Great for the blocking, the vision, just accomplished so many things here. Now they're gonna try to steal these stacks. Not gonna be hard. Nope. No, it's not. I was thinking, you know, oh, it's too bad that they didn't still have the flame spirits, but uh, they have solutions. They can take it. FN's not happy about this, though. Taking notes. Oh, he go and uses the Doom on the Phoenix. All right, he wants something out of this. Should be an easy enough kill unless somebody comes in and denies the poor bird, but doesn't look like that'll be the case. I get my Doom. Okay. I mean, I'm not too upset about that. Like him, his likelihood of killing Puck in a Doom Dyer's is pretty low. Tower. Puck's not going to make attack. that obvious mistake. Mm -hmm. Um cleans up the large camp as well, gets a little bit of a level out of it. This is fine. I mean, he's, his main goal and the way that Dooms are playing right now is just, they just devour a lot of creeps. They don't die because their armor is pretty decent. They get regen from the I'll bottle and then they just, you know, buy important items and they become a regular Doom. So um, as a mid player, like getting a free kill like that, like he probably wasn't going to use Doom anyway. So picking up one support on the map, totally reasonable use of your time. What's the phrase? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I believe that's correct, yes. That, that is very topical here, you know? If, if they're just gonna present themselves to you and you have the chance to use the Doom, get yourself a nice kill. I don't know if I wanna put, I wanna put Phoenix in my hand. It, it would probably burn you. Take damage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't Maybe think Phoenix Doom, would though. fit in your hand either. I think that's a very large bird. Yeah, your analogy is falling apart by the second. <laughs> I wasn't going Diva. literally purge. Sounded like you were. Uh, Why are you like this? <laughs> Top lane though. See, they uh, have vision on melees here. If they want to try to make something happen, that sentry ward is giving them plenty of vision. Got quite a few of them over on the side. Right now, Doom top of the net worth, followed very shortly by the centaur. So avoid transitioning to the jungle, very far away from his battle fury still, but the ring of health and once he starts getting neutral items he'll probably be fine to lane sustain here on um, this is going to leave line solo against ghost stick this is that point of the game where centaur gets insane net worth he's got 68 last hits by the way max out retaliate he's got a vanguard and a ring of health he is just going to take this tower by himself pretty much i mean there's not much that they can do about this top yeah, lane melee is perhaps a bit too far here the spin and they're not going to be able to quite be able to land the uh, ink swell so just gonna teleport out easy peasy. He's doing a really good job against the Ink Swell. Consistently just burrow striking defensively to get away from the explosion. Makes Slayer's uh, acceleration not as not as extreme. So uh, Juggernaut's still doing fine, but he's not doing as fine as the uh, the uh, uh, Faces Void is. So. The Stampede coming out because they used that uh... Dream Coil over here on the side, but it looks Radiant's like Victor might actually survive this as FN looking. There's going to be the Chronosphere coming out from Krylop. And he's so tanky, though. I'm not sure they can really do a whole heck of a lot. Plus, with that Ink Swell, they might be able to burst him down, though. Do they have it? Oh, it's a double Ink Swell. It's looking so good. They need another hit over to FN, and they just don't have it. They turn back around. They kill Krylop. The Sunray coming in from Astral. Not going to be able to do quite enough as the South gets tossed over onto FN. Palantimos, he's hungry, he's looking, but they've already made this rotation. It looks like they're going to push out the weight and perhaps maybe put some pressure on the tower. And a, and a regen. Wow, that healing word absolutely saving his life there. Taking his HP up while Puck went for him, but I'm most surprised he didn't use Doom on the Puck or something like that, attack. but um, 
It, it looked fine for him to turn there with the Ixwell, but then Ooh. that Bash from Void. And then, Ooh, it goes for him. Yeah, he had already used the, the Waning Rift. It. Yeah, it's it's too easy. They're making it too easy for Heaven right now. Man, this game is so different just from the fact Radiant's that Doom lived, or lived there. Mm -hmm. He dies, Puck doesn't get killed, but now it's a swing around the other way. Wow. <laughs> Amazing that he that he's able to, to keep his uh, his life up. Great TP Radiant's from Jug. If Jug doesn't TP there, falling. Doom doesn't get that kill, doesn't get the pressure, just a completely different game. Yeah, he just Dying happened to wander tower. through that he's area. I think he was looking at the, the lion Radiant's originally, but you know, Puck's gonna just sit that low in the that area. Why not? Another Dream Coil gets used over on the mid lane. Rubik, so it's time this will snap. So they'll end up losing the, the Rubik, but they put the pressure on the mid lane. There's not a whole heck of a lot they can do. All right, yeah, they can do that. They go in for the epicenter and the egg, but bottom lane, Jug was uh, playing with the cost a little bit. Just wants a little bit of space. Now the egg is down and so is the epicenter. I think you just go right back in. Yeah, this is the power of Centaur, certainly in this position. You just help force down the mid tower like uh, some other offlaners. The Sandstorm is going to make it harder. Yeah, but look at the FN. On. Oh, FN don't care. They've got, the, they've got everything they need to go and find the Sand King. There's a decent amount of damage, too, coming out of our FN thanks to the Sunray. But again, they're just going to take down the tower. Dyer's and these two big tanky boys, attack. Ghost Stick and FN, are going to be able Dyer's to walk away. But oh, man, what an insane, like, three minutes there for Unique now. And, and the crazy part is Doom got two regen runes there, and he had healing wards, so his amount of HP was insane. He didn't even have a hood, that's why they focused on him, but still way too survivable to be killed. And now it just feels like Doom was the perfect pick. Like, Puck does have damage, but it's not Radiant the most. Um, works better against lower HP heroes, and now mm -hmm. Doom just feels invulnerable. A pride. I picked some big tanky boys here. Pair off, and Slayers had very nice positioning this entire time. And again, it's, it's gonna be a while before this Faceless Void is ready to fight. He has not finished that Battle Fury yet. They go, they smoke up. Rubik also has Radiant's the Burrow Strike, which is, is like we said, the spell, if you are a Rubik player. Yeah, that's gonna feel good. He's got extra cast. It's level 3 too. He's got cast range from Arcane Supremacy, so... A lot of disable and damage coming from him. They're gonna rotate the top lane. There is a Chronosphere, but Void doesn't have his Battle Fury yet. They can get the uh, jump. They do have Doom, though. Okay. So they get him. Melee stomps off. Follow up with the Burrow Strike, though. The Silence. They get them tethered together. They'll find a kill on FN. But over on the backside, Ghostic managing to go and just slow them down here. As they'll be able to save Big Nub. Jump back in yet again here. Can they get this kill? It's looking pretty gosh darn good as they get Ghostic and they manage to clean up Slayer on the back line. So a wonderful fight going for Puck Champ. It's their amazing team fight. Uh, most importantly, the burrow that comes on the Doom before Doom Bur or Dooms the Dyer's Sand King. Very crucial because it sets up um, their spells. They get all of their abilities off and then Face the Void gets to fall with a great chrono. It was slightly hampered from the, uh, the Soulbind from Grimstroke, but they just cleaned up with all of their abilities. It felt that's like a that's hesitation. A great team fight. Did you feel that a little bit? No. Yeah. It was not. I mean, he jumps out of the trees. It, it takes a bit to cast Doom. Burrow Strike is instant. It's almost always going to hit you first. Just great Ooh. reaction. It's a nice hex, nice slow, everything here. It's going to allow the Faceless Void to run away. That was a little poor Sunray. I did not do that much damage there to the, to the Centaur. Very tanky guy. Still, the game is going great. 4k gold advantage for Team Unique. Juggernaut has finished his Battle Fury. Faces Void is just about to get it now. So slight net worth advantage on the Jug, but not as much as it was before. Not certainly. We'll be interested now to see how they want to respond, knowing that that Chronosphere is down. FN does have to be a little bit careful here. Does have the backup, though, in the form of Slayer. They got most of the big objectives already, right? They got safe lane tower, or, or technically their off lane tower. Radiant's they killed the enemy mid tower. tower. They lost their attack. safe lane, but that was because that fight went so bad. Uh, the other thing that's kind of crucial is that this game Centaur finished hood before going blink because mm -hmm. there's just too much magic damage on the enemy team. So him getting into the fight is going to be slightly delayed here. But for now, they're just going to hit creeps a bit. Uh, almost BKB on Doom is going to change things a lot too. So their next team fight is going to go a lot stronger as long as Doom gets his BKB off. Now, I think it, it's going to become very, very difficult for them to output enough damage to take down some of these larger lads, as we've been saying. 
uh, with the center, of course, having the hood, the fact that Doom is just innately tanky, and then again, later on, you know, just negating all that magical presence coming out from the side of Puck Champ is going to make things very difficult, because Krillat is just going to take a while before he's going to have that decent damage online. They're looking, they're hunting. Smoked up on both sides here. Trips passing the night, desperate, popping the smoke, but left immediately. BKB comes out, FN, he's not able to get the Doom off. That is the BKB, the nine second, fresh nine second BKB charge. Hesitated just a little bit there on dooming the puck, and as a result, he gets out. The lift from Rubik is not very fat, very long on level one, so he needs to kill. BKB, and you used maybe the enemy team compressor right now? I mean, still have lots of magic damage, they still got epicenter. You do, and they also now will have the Chronosphere up and running, so if they do decide they'd like to take a fight, they've got plenty of damage that they can throw into that chronosphere especially with the bkb down now like you see the itemization that phoenix is going have you on this build before i know you play phoenix a lot uh i let's see uh <laughs> nope can't sure say that i have no no okay no i uh, i'm pretty it's... sure i would get reported for griefing if i did that in my it's pubs kind of cool i mean you could potentially do two sun rays um or just you know full combo plus mm -hmm. double supernova um, the enemy team does not have good egg haters outside of Juggernaut. Juggernaut's very good at it with spin, but the rest of the heroes, not good at slap and egg. So, I mean, it could be really effective, and there aren't that many, like, silences and stuff. Normally, you need to protect yourself from a silence, right. but his, his team is so mobile and good at initiating, he can always follow up. So, in some senses, like, having this refresher means that they can Ooh. always fight. Oh, FN, he is just wrong place, wrong time. The Sunray, they go, they use the Chronosphere. And that's uh, Doom they don't have to worry about, and it's going to be a Grimstroke they don't have to worry about as well. Very nice smoke coming out from the side of Puck Champ. They're just reading their opponents really well. It's not just the smoke, it's that they like teleported ahead of time knowing that there was going to be a catch there. I guess they had a ward, they probably saw him rotate through it, is, is what happened. But um, yeah, great kill. Cross from a Chronosphere, but Doom dead for 20 seconds should give them this tower. Ooh, just to be careful though. They have Blink on Ghost Stick as well, although with the silence coming out. Oh, the finger! Big Nub is toast! Palantima still waiting nearby. Could still go in. You can hear they're thinking about lining it up and jump forward immediately over onto the Void, but Stampede will come out. They'll back off. They'll try to reposition. The Doom is joining the fight very, very shortly. Maybe it's just a little bit too early now, and now he has a Phantom Surprise, so he is going to be sacrificed over at the back lines. They'll get the kill onto Colossus. Plantimos goes and uses the Omni Slash, and they're running right into the Roche Pit. There is no Epicenter they have to worry about. There is no Chronosphere, no Dream Coil. This is the Roche that belongs to Unique. Most likely, yeah. Kind of looked like a great movement by Puck Champ, but um, yeah, Sanking did not need to die for that last hit. It was not worth I mean, he got some gold out of it, of course, but like, not a good play, because now they get to take Roche. Let him get the deny, you know? I was wondering if he was trying to just time his stun just perfectly there, but no stick. Dang, Swell was trying to uh, do a cheeky play here with Desperate. Orb getting tossed in. They're getting low, but the Icarus dive in. It's going to be Astral who snatches it up. So definitely a worthwhile steal as it looks like Slayer barely going to be able to walk away. Phoenix back up and Shuki is going to try to use that Sunray to do anything right here. But the BKB over on FN will allow him to stay alive a little bit long. Krylat, he's, oh, he's just too far in. He needs to be careful. Can they close the gap on him? They're just chasing after, but they don't have the lockdown right now. It's not available. They don't have that ink swell. Not bad at all for Puck Tamp. Stealing the Aegis. Um, I mean, he got doomed and Puck ends up dying, but not a terrible trade considering. Still net worth disadvantage, of course, and Juggernaut's going to finish his SNY before um, the uh, the faces void like the old. Uh, no, he's actually going Yasha into BKB instead, which is definitely important. He needs magic immunity when he jumps in. Let's take a look at the fight once again here. We're going to see a Dream Coil whipped on the left side, but very importantly, he dives in. Oh, Jug was stunned by Roshan, so he couldn't pick up the Aegis. That hurt things. Here comes the Puck ulti that doesn't catch Centaur. He ends up face shifting the stun, of course, but Radiant's on the right side, he ends up getting doomed and silenced here. And then the sun rage is not going to be effective. BKB gets popped and Void jumps in, but 
If he had Chrono here, it obviously would have been amazing, but nope, sorry, 160 seconds, good luck. Radiant the fact that he was able to survive was pretty remarkable. I was a little surprised on that. They just didn't have the lockdown there, though. If, if they had any form of lockdown available, they would have gotten the kill. Unless in the top lane, that uh, Stampede just a little bit too late here. And in the center, again, he's tanky, so he can afford to go and snap that Dream Coil, but he does have to run for his life. That ward again, that, that ward has now killed him two times. They caught him farming at the, the medium camp. They got close and did the... Uh, the blink epi with the sable follow so stampede was just not going to save him so big kill now he's dead for 30 seconds they get to pressure the map once again now their opponents are on the back foot they're sitting very patiently trying to pin certain in fact they indeed managed to do it a good stop though coming out from gustic there's the help paired off again as they have the finger melee's oh but there's the chronosphere and the egg the dream coming through here as gustic just get loyal and by cry they'll turn back around the silence over to valentina the egg will pop and Gonna be a dead juggernaut. Void does die though. Not, not great for them. Um, ultimately, good skill usage though. Uh, Slayer dropping the ulti on Sanking. By doing that, it uh, binds him and I believe it prevents him from using Burrow Strike, even if he's not lashed to somebody else. So, But I was a little surprised he didn't do the Burrow Strike follow up on Centaur. He let himself get stunned. It was kind of weird. But uh, kills for kills. Chronosphere gets used. Doom is off cooldown. Not bad for Unique. Gold Advantage is still up. Then go back to eating creeps and pressure in. I mean, it definitely uh, could have gone worse. They could have not ended up getting that kill on the Faceless Void, but let's go back and take a look at that. Again, everything. So here he goes, not burrowing. I think he expected, yeah, he was expecting, I think he expected Hex from Lion, but Lion was low mana was the issue. Mm -hmm. So it was just a miscommunication. He expected Lion to disable follow-up. He didn't go for it. He thought he could save Burrow Strike. Then it was too late. <laughs> but Egg was excellent. Able to kill the Juggernaut here is wonderful for them, but losing the Void as well makes it feel... A little bit more bittersweet. Sure, Big Num is giggling to himself Dyer's there. Very happy with his uh, contributions. Mm -hmm. But another smoke gets used coming out from the side of Unique. They've got FN. He love to actually, you know, use Doom for a change instead of getting jumped on. He's That's a great cool. initiator now. He's got War Song. Stampede. Where are they running, though? No, oh, they're running towards Ducalus. That's just the position five. I think they'd much rather... Oh, okay, the, the find on the Phoenix here in the top lane will also be a, a nice addition. I think what they really wanted was the Puck, though. And they do still manage to find him, but they just don't have enough lockdown. Not when it's just uh, Ghostic there. Yeah, of FN started running to the left instead. If he had stayed with Ghostic, he would have been able to get Doom off and get the Puck kill there. So a little bit of miscoordination. Mm -hmm. But either way, still very good for them. Now pressuring the tier one tower. Jug is a piece into his ags. We take a look at Void. He is still trying to finish his battle fury. Um, his network is actually pretty comparable, but just feels like he's a his item timings are just a little bit less effective. He needs BKB to feel safe. Jug is not in that position, thus he can be more aggressive in these moments. I almost had a heart attack. He said uh, Battle Fury, and I was like, I'm pretty sure he has his Battle Fury, right? Did he get rid of it? What did he do? But yes, it is the, the BKB. He's almost got completed. And uh, we do have a Blink Dagger picked up for now on Rubik. So even nicer skills here coming out for Bignum. Hopefully, if it goes according to his plans. The Finger of Death is fantastic. I mean, that's what got them to kill on the Faceless Void. But guys, we need a smoke. I only have 10 seconds with this. <laughs> Gotta get some more stacks. And they're like, but let me hit this one creep camp. He's no, screaming it's on go his time. Because now his finger's gone. <laughs> that. It's gone. Good luck. Well, there goes 600 damage, assholes. You know, report, <laughs> report. That's an Overwatch case right there. You just get that in your your bin, and you're just like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about this one, guys. I'm not sure if uh, that counts, but big smoke on smoke Dive action. Are scanning. Who is going Maybe to find who? Melee is the pop four. Ghostic jumping forward immediately. They want to try to just take it out. And again, beautiful. Just the Chronosphere egg combo, but they are held together. And this is not looking great here. Melee is the first one to fall. The egg does indeed go off. Ghostic, he pops stick though. He's actually still alive. And they do manage to get the Doom down as they go and can take out two heroes here. Palantim is fighting Desper and Astral. The hunt is on for Tikal as he is just a little old lion, but they've had enough of his shenanigans and they want to just erase him to jump forward here from Ghostic to double edge. Down goes to Kallus, and the only person left standing is Faceless Void. Very cool team fight. Uh, mistakes basically by Puck Champ to approach in that situation. Uh, on, uh, it was very smart um, on the unique side to stand on that cliff because then the smoke breaks when they have vision and their opponents don't. Sanking and Burrow going up because he didn't have vision. He gets initiated on. He almost dies right away. 
but Corona survives in time. But then the follow-up problem was that um, the, the, the Earth Spike steal from Rubik guaranteed the disable, I believe, on Void Radiance and the Phoenix right before fallen. Phoenix was able to use Refresher and go for a second egg Radiance or something else. Tower. So kind of just attack. better positioning and great skill usage there by Unique to win that fight. It's all about pressing the buttons, as the boy said earlier on the panel. There it is, the Burrow Strike, the epicenter plus the Sunray plus the Puck joining in, but the BKB comes out from FN, and Radiant that's a big old demon who's just sashaying away. No Roche up just yet, though. So in order to get him healed, uh, going for um, the Shiva's card next will be great. Lend us some of the healing, but mostly just to help him initiate and slow enemy heroes. Void is going for his Sanjay next. That way, if he gets doomed in any of these fights, he's gonna have a good time queuing up Lincoln's afterwards. We'll see if he picks up his like shard or anything like that afterwards. But right now, I, his single target damage is a little bit lacking. His Chronosphere have been good, but um, I can't help but think that I wish he had a little bit more damage than a Lincoln's afterwards. But you kind of do need it if he does get doomed in the late game when his net worth is really high. He is certainly the target to hit with that. Feels like there's just so many items that this Faceless Void needs to pick up in order for Puck Champ to, to have enough damage and, and just survive uh, half the time as well. I have to say, though, these... just because of Doom. True, true. I do have to say, though, the the Egg and Chronosphere combos have been so nice coming out from the side of Puck yeah. Champ. They've really helped a lot in these battles, and uh, I think that's really what's kind of helping. Staunch a little bit of this bleeding, but yeah, for sure. Uh, Phoenix is Dyer's past 12 now, so he's got level two supernova. He's queuing up a shard that'll give him super or sunray during Radiant's supernova, and that's what's really going to change attack. things. That he can layer these twice, two sunrays, two supernovas in a row. Like it, it's pretty safe for him to do that because by the time the first egg explodes, it buys him two and a half seconds of the next duration of supernova. So this could be really sick if he does get to play on the outside of the fight while all of his team initiates. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see if, it, if he gets the combo to work. Well, they're on the hunt now. Trying to do some wrapping movement. The blink four from Decalus drops the ward. These sentries right on top of each other. Ghost stick. Looks like he is going to be the one who gets jumped on here. As they channel up the epicenter. He'll fall up with the sun ray. Get the silence off. And that is one very distant. Oh, they follow up. The, oh, they get the double doom and the double finger. The lift up as they go right in here. They just obliterate melees. Melee's buying back. Egg will pop off to the side. They weren't able to quite do much, but again, they have a second egg if necessary. Slayer has been left behind, though. Desperate should be able to blink away at him. I'm not sure these creeps are going to allow the... Uh, end here. Allow him to just suicide upon them. The perfect circumstance where Lincoln's would have been amazing. Uh, would have protected the Void there from getting Doom. And would have given them an option to use Chrome Serve. But not bad considering. Oh, nope. disable on Doom now. Well, rest of the team is here. Should be just fine. I think they've got the protection necessary. Um, misuse their skills again. They were expecting Burrow Strike, but a great hex onto Sanking from the Rubik prevents that, or lift, I guess, lifted him. So no disable fall up, so it's okay. But it's, it's looking really good for Puck Camp, in my opinion. Um, despite the fact that they're behind in net worth, it just feels a little bit easier for them to take fights. Um, they have amazing team fight. That's gonna be hard for you and you to, to fight through. Unless they keep getting double dooms, but now that it's on cooldown, too bad. Rush is gonna probably land from Puck Camp's side. It's gonna be very difficult for them to get into that pit, especially knowing the fact that Faceless Void, of course, does have the Chronosphere, but they are smoked up. Making the way over, they do have the blink over on Ghost. If they don't have the vision just yet, the Stampede to jump forward. They're a little bit early here, but they should be able to go and clean up over onto Desperate. Melee's in front of the back lines. He's next to the ball. It's a nice Chronosphere here from Krylon, but he just, where's your damage? You don't have a whole heck of a lot other than the Phoenix coming through. Does have the Sunray. They'll try to put out more, but again, they can just sl slash around as they take down Krylon. And they're still hunting. They want Astral over on these back lines. FN and Bingham just chasing down this poor burn. They've got the stop. The Hex is nice, but it doesn't do enough. There's just a Chronosphere off to the side because, you know, it looks pretty. Why not look at it for a little bit? And they managed to get themselves an Aegis online for Palantimos. Oh, what a fight there. Uh, they're just not ready for that on Puck Jam. Most importantly, did they have somebody the right to bring smoke? I don't think they did in that circumstance. So the center they had on people top of them with Inkswell. They're to the north, I think, not to the east. And Unique came from the right instead. Let's take a look. I mean, Decalus is right attention. behind the tree, but he's just not fast I, I enough with guess. the blink and the stampede. I think that Radiant was hard. Plus the uh, the ink swell. They just had so much going on there. And, and they eventually get the chrono down, but Sand King's already dead. 
Puck's already dead. The single target damage from Void is not that incredible. And he used BKB to come out and drop the Chronos in the first place. So after it's over, he's just completely vulnerable and ends up getting killed. U Unique is just initiating better. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. They're looking very good here indeed. And not much that they can do to follow up with the epicenter, but it's just so much damage. It's not looking great here. So you're gonna be able to get it out now. Melees will fall. Radiant's and look at tower. look at the rest of them. They're attack. like, okay, you've used everything here. This is really cute. Takalis is taking all of our mana, but you know, we just want to hit things. We're big bruisers. Has fallen. Got the healing ward. Good play. Trying to jump in, slow them down with time dilation, but yeah, damage is uh, one of the issues that they're they're Radiant's facing. They did get a shard in that last fight. I think attack. that's where Jugs came from. We know it well. The old spin right click, very effective mm -hmm. here. But yeah, the, the void damage is just not feeling too great, and this is certainly one of the battle fury issues. And one reason why I kind of feel like Maelstrom is just better on the hero. It probably does fall. more damage single target. And still makes you farm at a semi-competitive rate. Time so is money. I'm not not sure I like this battle for your build on the feels a little bit weird. They're stampede. They're hoping they can grab desperate. They've gotta move quickly though. They're already oh double oh, bounty know. runes. Oh he only picks up oh, one and he's gonna get doomed now uh, as well. He died because of two bounty runes genuinely. He like he was like, oh god, there's two. He tried to pick them both up and then it bottled it and he had to like press it. I, I don't know. Huge death. That's what you got. You got to leave those traps on the map, guys. Wait until they fall for him, and then you profit. It's like a, a strat. It's like in D and D. You know, you find a chest, and you're like, "Oh, sweet loot!" And it turns out to be a mimic. It was a plan the entire time. You fell for it, and now you have a bounty rune, but it's still in your bottle because you didn't get to pop it off. Disaster. Other opponents were are gonna pressure the enemy side of the map, and they have to sit. Loses them warding time. Loses them chances to get kills. Altimos just walking into your base. Stun. Radiant's bottom tower about it. is under Oh no, all right, yeah, they'll, they'll go, they'll commit to it. But immediately the lift right back up again. That's a dead Millis. It's gonna be the buyback now from Desperate. Trying to slow over onto the back lines. You get a nice dream coil off to the side, but uh, they'll try to go and try to just slow down Carla. He does manage to go for a Kronos here, but he's all hooked up with his other teammate here. And again, they'll go. Can they get any more damage down? The Slash coming out over here onto the Faceless Void. It's too much. Down goes Krylas. They'll turn their attention to Call of will go down too. GG's get dropped. Well played. And uh, they finally got to do the combo, but it just was not enough. Too far behind at this point. Faceless Void's damage not feeling good enough. Unique, man. Good team. Yeah, they're looking really good. I mean, they had some really nice combos, like you said, but the, the whole problem came down to just this faceless void. He gets these chronos off.